I'm looking at this creek right now and we're about to break it down. I caught fish that we're going to show at the end of this video and guys I just got done also with a on the water lesson, forward facing lesson where we just whacked them on a great day of fishing. Now the conditions today though, kind of similar to this day, high pressure, uh, bluebird skies, fall time of year. Today we had more wind than on this trip that I'm going to show at the end of the video. Um, and, and even in this video, we, we caught little ones and it wasn't like nothing crazy, guys. I'm not going to lie. But later in the day, we hammered them following this kind of pattern right now for the fall time of the year. And I'm going to break down this creek and we're going to talk about other creeks as well, guys. Welcome to the Fishing Coach YouTube channel. Coach E, go by Jimmy Easterling. Haven't done a video like this in a while. Leave me a comment right now if you like this type of video where I go through and break down different lakes. If that's the case, leave me some lakes to break down and kind of talk about, okay? Um, like I said, I got some footage in the, the video. Footage isn't the, um, there's fish catches, but it's not like we caught giants. Now this day, we did catch them really good later that I didn't film. I already talked about that in a video that uh, we wore them out. But like today on the water lesson, man, we wore them out. We had like over 15 pounds. It was a blast. Similar to this. Different part of Washita, but similar to this. So, Right now, uh, we have a creek. So here, let's just pull out <coughs> Washita real quick because we're guys looking at it, all right? So one thing now about Washita, uh, giant lake, and there's a giant lake, and, and I always tell people 90% of the fish live in 10% of the lake. That's a theory you hear about. It is true for Lake Washita. Very true, okay? Now looking at it, this day in this footage, we're in the mid-lake area, okay? And we caught them really well in this front half of the creek. You got the front half and the back half. <coughs> and now this right here is a big section, okay? Now if we look at the Google Earth, all right, you see this is a low water image. We've got a couple humps here that are showing up, which are showing up right here. But it's a pretty good size creek considered on the lake. Now one thing about this day though, one thing um, that, that kind of got us looking at this was, and this is an area we've caught fish before, but the deep dive app, this one we share with you guys, the deep dive app, okay, when I did the best areas feature, okay, it took all the data from the tournaments on Highland Reservoirs for this time of year on the fall to where that water temperature's in that pattern, uh, which there's not many like major, major tournaments at Washita, okay, that we take this data from, and it takes from other Highland Reservoirs, Table Rock Lake, Bull Shoals, uh, Lake of Ozarks, similar lakes now. Now this lake has grass, and I know those don't, but it puts in the algorithm we got and it picked this mid lake area front half of creeks and this is where later in the day when we caught them really really good it was here now this here was just starting the day like i said part of it just you know guys with the the fishing and we had to get around some better ones and we got bound some better ones at later in the day but with my guide business and stuff I, I can't put everything out there but we're going to talk about this area this area's had a lot of fish caught on it a lot of fit tournaments have been worn in it okay but i want to go through the whole process so as we come in here okay one thing i like about creeks all right first thing you always want to know is where that creek channel is running that creek channel is just like the easy interstate now not all the fish will use it bait fish will use it migrate through uh but that's just a simple kind of deal to look at it goes by this point then it comes runs through here it shows some our bridge or some road and stuff in here but what one thing we start off on is this little hump. So that's one thing I like to look for is little irregular irregularities. Besides the points, is there going to be a hump, a high spot? So we start off on this on this uh, hump here. Then we went back through it, and where we ended up, you saw a lot of the footage was right here off this hump. Okay, that channel bends right here by it. Then it goes, and we caught a lot of our fish right out here. Okay, there were fish on this, and the fish on it. Now what's happening, guys? Is people became so good fishermen, they'll fish stuff like this. I've been fishing stuff like this for 20 years, and now the people are figuring it out, and you still catch them on points and stuff. Washita especially, they love points at Lake Washita. But we caught fish not just up here, but we caught the roamers out here. This is where the live scope comes in handy, and while my forward-facing lessons, we start showing people. Um, and then as you keep going through, we went back here and didn't see much out there. There were mostly, all of them fish were right here, which was in that front half of the creek, which is similar because later in the day when we found the better fish and caught them, it was the same deal. Different area, okay, in this main middle area right here, okay, um, which the deep dive app kind of highlighted that, which was pretty, pretty interesting. So there, now let's say we go up here to this creek, all right? So go up here to this creek. This one doesn't have as many humps in it. That's one thing I just kind of wanted to pick is like, hey, Jimmy, what would you do? So if we come up here like to this one, okay, first thing I'm going to do, look where that channel goes. That channel just kind of hangs out here, it bends up here. It bends this way, so I try to look through here. We got that little high spot there. That's like the only one. There's this little hump here. So this is where it's going to be a scenario where you kind of follow that. And then anytime there's bends, 
I would try to check the areas up here, okay? Now, also, though, you always can't forget sometimes the inside bends. The inside bends, the areas have them. Um, I like this right here. See, that channel bends over here, but here's another little, you know, we got a little drain here, a point here, a point here. Good little spot for fish to hang out when bait fish or whatever comes in that way. Good little ambush point there. Um, so that's, you know, there, and as it keep going, keep going back. Now, this side here is a big, you know, Got a little kind of hump point kind of out here. Uh, yeah, it's a little kind of high spot there. That channel's over, that channel's on this side though, but you still can't give this out because that's, the, can't give this up, or I say give up, quit on this because it is still some very, very deep water right here where fish can leave. So, uh, but what I'm doing this time here is graphing. I'm looking for the bait fish. But if you get in areas, because like this lake, there's bait fish in it, but not as much. Not like this in the lake has a lot of bait. But when you get over here to this clear water, I mean, like over here in these areas, I mean, there's a times you'll never see bait. And that's one thing I don't get too worried about is I still look for the high percentage areas. Um, and for example, like when you go up here to this bend, right, you got this bend right up here. I mean, we have this creek, it shows flooded timber, these points, high spot, like these two points right here, high percentage areas. We caught fish off this today, by the way. There's a lot of fish there right now. So that's just a high percentage area. So that's one thing to look at too is don't always overcomplicate it don't always make it too too hard okay um and so yeah let's just kind of pick another little another zone let's go down here to crystal okay go down here to crystal a lot of timber okay a lot of timber i like this here because we have a true creek it splits so that point right there is going to be good and then now one thing about this game with the timber game and forward facing now in the fall is you can come out here and start looking in this timber where before you're using more 2d sonar traditional methods but now you are here, out here, and you can see them where they're going and swimming. So pretty cool stuff there. Appreciate you guys. Let me know if you like this video. Let's, know, let's now go get into the fishing action. Trolling away. I'm sorry, I thought that was a new brush pile. Uh -huh. What ain't that dude close to the boat? That's that almost working. They're working it until it gets to the boat. It's gonna look like a bass. Ooh, he's a good one. Yep, how about that? That's a score of these dudes. Okay, get out of here, because you're freaking school spotted bass. So, like up there, we could probably throw and... But after after we just caught John, John's probably told him, hey. Oh, those two just tried to eat my minnow on the way down. Oh, you don't sure me now. How cool! How cool! Big old spotty spotty! Don't you do it, don't you. Freaking they ate that thing. Large mouth spot. Oh yeah, it is a large mouth. Go, A Rig. They need to stop moving, and A Rig needs to go faster. There's like 10 of them on top of that pile. Oh, 
fishing. Now they're breaking up there. Yeah. Oh, they're all about to come up and eat on the surface. Right in front of us. I'm about to blow my air rig through. You're kidding, You're kidding me. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. That's the piles that we used to throw the jigs at, like let it fall down in the hole. I made a bad cast. Coming in right there, though. Oh, there it is. Somebody lost these Kentuckys now, I'm about to get them. I better be careful. Go uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. Oh, it's a large now. Here we are guys, we got a good verse today for the Faith Juice segment. Thank you for watching. I think this can be for all of the viewers today. Proverbs 18.21 says, The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Okay, so, pretty interesting proverb there. Alright, so it says the tongue has the power of life and death. So it's kind of like, how are you using your tongue? One thing I know with speaking um, a lot of people sometimes speak before they think. Uh, sometimes people might not speak enough. Uh, so it depends how you use your mouth. Use it for good or bad. Are you, you know, speaking too much in scenarios, or do you have a friend or someone you companion that you need to share something with and you hadn't, or it could be some guidance. Uh, but as we know, the tongue is a very, very harmful in today's uh, world. Always has been, you know. You always hear that thing of, oh, how words, um, words don't need to affect you, you know, or like, don't, don't let words affect you, but it does affect us as people. So, how are you using your tongue and how are you speaking? Are you speaking for good? Are you using it for evil? Um, it's something, like I said, that's very powerful, as it says here, of life and death. So, think about that this week, uh, as you're, this weekend as you're going. Let's use it for life and not for death. Appreciate you guys, and let's see you on the next one.